Hey guys, welcome to the video. And here today I'm going to show you how to convert a PS2 bin or ISO format type game into a PlayStation 2 Classics ISO, which is otherwise known as an ISO.bin.enc file. And there is a few ways or a couple of ways to do this. Today I'm going to show you two, one using the PC and the other one using the PS3 where it will convert the ISO for you. So what's the purpose of doing this? Well, if you want your PS2 game to be converted into a package format, you know, .pkg, then you have to convert the ISO to PS2 Classics, otherwise known as the .enc ISO in order to make that package file. Now, some of you might be asking, well, wait a second, why can't I just play, you know, just the bin or the ISO either through Webman or whatever, like the way I'm showing you here on screen. And yeah, you can definitely do that for sure. And you know, you probably wouldn't have any issues, but some people like to add, I don't know, a little bit more flair or more presentation to their games or whatnot. So by converting it into a package file, you can make your own icon, you can make box art or whatever background image you want. You can even add sound. Um, and even though you're not hearing it right now, you might hear it later on, like I did with SSX Tricky. I also made the animated icon and as you can see the box art and everything. So some people just want you know the presentation to be better and that's why you would do it this way. And you know, the games kind of install like PS2 type games, um, PSN type games. So today I won't be showing you how to make the package file. This is kind of like a two part series. It's just showing you the conversion of the ISO. And then in the next video, we'll show you how to make the package file uh, with everything that you need. And uh, the link will be in the description in this one to that video. But if you're watching this video on the day it came out, then you're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to see the next one. Um, I'm going to put a link right now in the description as well uh, to this video I made showing you how to install Aldo's PS3 Tools Collection. If you already have that in your system, great. If not, I strongly suggest you install it. But if you don't want to, that's fine. There will be a link in the description to a zip file you're going to download that's going to have tools that we are going to be using in this video and in the next one. And it doesn't require really any installation of anything, so you can use that instead. Also, make sure your ISO is ready. I made a, a video showing you how to make these PS2 games, at least some of them, a little bit smaller by removing some dummy and padded files. And then I also even showed you how to add the Codebreaker version 10 to your ISO. So make sure you've done everything you needed to do with your ISO before we get started. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so let's get this on the way. Let's cover some housekeeping real quick. Uh, number one, I'm assuming in this video and in the next one that your system is fully jailbroken, meaning you have custom firmware installed. For those of you running Han exploit, this may very well work for you, these next videos, uh, but I'm not sure because I don't deal with Han exploit stuff at all. I only mess with fully jailbroken PS3s. The other thing is that not all PS2 games will work, and that's just the nature of emulation. While most do, whether you convert them to PS2 classics or not, it doesn't matter. Some games just won't work. They'll either glitch up, they may freeze, they'll be buggy, or they just won't load at all. Nothing I could do about that, guys. Sorry. Just move on to the next game and the next one until you get one that does work properly. Uh, you have to make sure also that your system has been fully set up correctly, which I'm not there next to you, so I don't know how you set it up. Uh, but yeah, then lastly, if you are on a fully jailbroken system, these games that we're converting over to PS2 Classics will not work in DEX mode. You need to be in KEX, so you'll need to convert over to KEX to get the emulation to work properly. Otherwise, it will not. As a matter of fact, these PS2 package files, if you're in DEX, they won't even load. You'll stay stuck on the please wait screen, and then after a while, you just get kicked back to the XMB. All right, let's get started now. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is download the zip file from the description. Go ahead and extract the two folders there. The first one is True Ancestor Repacker, which we will not be using today. That's for the next video, so you might as well leave it there. The next one is the PS2 
PKG and tools folder. So go ahead and open that. Now this is really important. If you've already installed Aldo's PS3 tools collection, like I mentioned earlier in this video, if you've installed that and it all installed correctly and whatnot, then you don't need to use anything in this folder because you already have everything. It, all of this is in that Aldo's PS3 tools collection. If you haven't installed that, then you, we will be using what's in this folder. We're going to use some stuff today and some stuff in the next video. These applications should all work right from within this folder without having to install anything. But some people do run into issues with them, even with the uh, uh, Aldo's PS3 tools collection. So I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to hopefully get it uh, to get it to run smoothly and work your first time out. So let's close this and then we're going to do a shortcut here. Now I'm in Windows 7, uh, but you can follow along if you're in another version. Hopefully it'll get you to the same thing. We're going to type advanced system. And then right here, it should say advanced view, advanced system settings. And that's what we want. Click on it. Now you can also get through this through the control panel and then clicking on system and then system properties or whatever. Uh, and you'll get to an advanced system settings tab. And then you can come here and you'll find it, but this is just a lot easier. Anyway, here you're going to go into the settings box right here in the performance section. And then there's the DEP, otherwise known as data execution prevention. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that tab. You're going to click add, and then you're going to navigate to this PS2 PKG tools folder. So let's do that. All right. And here it is desktop. And there we go. All right. Basically, you are going to add each one of these four EXE files, the Param SFO Editor EXE, PKG View EXE, PS2 Classics EXE, and the PS2 Classics GUI EXE. So you're going to click on one, like the Param, click open, and it will be added here. You're going to click add again, then come to the PKG view, hit open. You'll see it here, then click add again and so on and so forth till you get all four of these done. And they should, when you're done, they should all be here. Note that one of them, even though it says PS2 Classics, it is called here PS3 Classics. Don't worry, it's not a mistake. It happens with the GUI EXE. That's fine. Make sure those four have check marks, uh, check that the boxes are check marked next to them. Jeez. And then click apply and OK. And then if the apply button is on here, click apply on that and then click OK. And that's it. You're done. OK, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and take those same files and you may want to set them up so that they run as administrator. So you're going to right click on the Param SFO, go to properties and go to compatibility and just click run program as administrator and click apply and then OK. And you're going to do the same thing for PKG view, PS2 Classics EXE, and PS2 Classics GUI EXE. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I don't have to go through all that stuff because I already have all those PS3 tools collection installed in my PC since forever. So I'm going to be using the stuff I already have installed. But if you don't have it installed, then of course you'll be using the PS2 PKG and tools folder. Uh, which we've been working on the last couple of minutes. So as I mentioned in the intro, there's two ways about converting these uh, ISO into PS2 Classics. We're going to cover the first way here, which involves using PS2 Classics GUI EXE. And then after we're done with that, we're going to cover the PS3 method, which doesn't require you to use any of this. Anyway, so go ahead and for now, click on the PS2 Classics GUI.exe. I'm going to do it over here since I already have all this stuff installed. Once that comes up, we can go ahead and close out of these folders. Make sure the encrypt tab is the one that's active. Just click on it. Go into options. Make sure it looks like this. Everything is set to stock. And we're going to navigate to your ISO. My ISO is here in the Metal Slug Anthology folder. There it is. I've already trimmed it down. If I remember right, I took out whatever padded files or whatever was in there. I showed you guys how to do that in the video, which the link will be in the description. I've also added the Codebreaker version 10 to this ISO built in. So it's ready to go. 
When you're ready, go ahead and click on the browse button and navigate to your ISO. I had already done it before, so it's already here. Let's go ahead and click open. And when you do, you'll get all this stuff popping up. If your ISO is 700 megabytes or less, okay, then you will pick CD. If it's anything above 700 megabytes, then you'll fit, you'll pick the first selection here, which is DVD five slash DVD nine. This will always be Kex. I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. You said this doesn't work on Dex. If we click Dex, then it'll work. No, it won't. So don't bother. <laughs> uh, just leave it on Kex. And that's pretty much it. You're going to click on encrypt. If a window pops open right now, when you click on encrypt, then it says, do you want to add L I M G sector or whatever? Just go ahead and always click yes. All right, so that's it, it's finished. This was about 1.3 gigs and it took about 20 seconds to do. So it doesn't take very long, it just depends on your PC. Now it's gonna ask you, where do you wanna save your file? And it usually points you to the folder where your ISO is and that's fine, just hit save. Okay, it's finished. Now we'll open up the folder and here's your ISO and there is your freshly converted ISO into PS2 Classics dot bin dot enc which is exactly what we need now believe it or not your modded ps3 fully jailbroken one with multi-man installed can actually do this on its own and generate this file so i'm going to show you how to do that right now let's go ahead and close this up okay and that finishes the first method on how to convert your iso over to this iso dot bin dot enc file now, if you want your PS3 to do all the work for you and you don't want to use your PC to convert the file over, you can. So that's the second method, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one since we're going to make another one. The PS3 will make that exact same file. So you can either FTP this ISO when you're done with it and you've done everything you're going to do. You can FTP it directly into your PS3 or we can do this right off of the USB. If you're going to use your USB, make sure on the root of it, you make a folder called PS2 ISO, all in capital letters. Open that folder and then drag your ISO right there. As you can see, I've already done it. For those of you who are going to transfer it via FTP, I'll show you in a minute where it goes so i'm going to go ahead and boot up the system and i'll meet you at the ps3 okay so here we are in multi-man and let me switch this over so you can see things a little bit better now for those of you who are going to put the iso via ftp all you need to do is take your ftp client point it to the dev hdd0 directory right here and then you're going to put the iso right in here in the ps2 iso folder Okay, as you can see, my Metal Slug Anthology ISO is not here yet, okay? And that's where you're going to send it to. Now, I do have it on my USB, so if we go into the USB here, you see the PS2 ISO folder there, and there it is right there. If you're using your USB, you do not have to put it, you don't have to put this ISO in your system because the PS3 is gonna do that right now. All right, so from this point forward, whether you put the ISO into your PS3 or you're using your USB, the instructions will be the same for everybody. Okay, a lot of people say that you cannot convert this anymore in multi-man, these ISOs, but you can. The problem is you cannot do it in multi-man Cobra mode. If you look up at the top here, the box that's moving around, Right there, it says MMCM, that stands for Multi-Man Cobra Mode. It will not convert it in this mode, and you need to go back to regular Multi-Man. To do that, it is super mega easy. Go here, where it says Switch to Multi-Man Mode, press X, and it will reboot into Multi-Man Mode. All right, now we're in Multi-Man Mode. If you look in the top up here, uh, top left corner, you'll see now it says Multiman, not MMCM. And these down here, these things like the themes and the uh, restart and stuff all actually say Multiman. So we are good to go. Now what we're going to do is we can go here to Retro. Now I'm going to press Square a few times, but you don't have to. You can maybe hit Refresh also once you put the game in. So let's do that first. Just go ahead and hit Refresh once you put your USB or you've transferred the game 
uh, the ISO. <clears throat> I'm going to hit square so I get to PS2, although it's not necessary. Uh, that's just me. And there it is. Now, if, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look very closely, it will say uh, PS2, and then in the little box it says USB. If you transferred it into your hard drive, it'll say HDD instead. So at this point, you're just going to highlight the ISO and press X. It's going to say, do you want to convert it? Just hit yes. All right, once it's finished, it will reboot Multiman. And when it does, if you were in Multiman Cobra mode, it will bring you back here to Multiman Cobra mode. Obviously, if yours already said Multiman to begin with in the top corner, then you didn't need to put it into Multiman mode. So once it's done converting the ISO, it will always put it in the exact same place for everybody. So you're going to go into dev HDD zero, go into the PS2 ISO folder, and now you will see there's a folder there. It will be named after your ISO and it'll have a PS2 classics at the end of it. So let's go there. And there it is, the ISO.bin.enc. You can now copy it to your USB, stick it then in your PC. Once you copy it to your USB, you could delete it from here if you want. You could delete the whole folder um, or FTP it to your PC, and then you could delete this whole folder if you don't need it anymore. And then you could package things up, which is what I'm going to show you what to do or how to do in the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one.